Good evening, and welcome to another one of my episodes of A Versus Day Keeps Islam Away. Um, before we start, today's subject is going to be extremely disturbing. Um, it's disgusting, it will infuriate a lot of people. However, I will be giving references to every single thing I say today. Now, <clears throat> the references that I'll be using for the most part of today's episode is from Asira, as Sunnah. As you know, uh, Islam is composed of several components. You have the Quran, you have al Hadith, the sayings, the narrations, and then you have as Sunnah, al Sira, which is the path, the way that Muhammad the Prophet Muhammad had lived his life, the path which he has taken and like the name uh, the Sunni Muslims, the, that is the path that they ought to follow. Now I understand and there's going to be a lot of issues with this video because the, a lot of these are being, a lot of these references are actually being disputed every single day. But now Al-Fuqaha, the Muslim scholars, they're going through all of those and they've been pretty much just chopping them off saying, okay, this never existed, this never happened, this never happened. Okay, <clears throat> now let's get started. Today's episode is going to be about paraphilia. I'm going to show you how Muhammad and Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a paraphiliac. Paraphilia is a psychosexual disorder. It's marked by extreme sexual urges and fantasies and behaviors that involve objects, suffering, humiliation, children, and other non-consenting uh, partners, if you may. I'm going to have to apologize in advance. Uh, almost none of these books have been translated into English or any other language because you'll see why they have not been translated. So <clears throat> all the titles, everything is in Arabic. So here's what I'm going to do. I will, I will reference everything <clears throat> And I'll put the references on the side. I'll <clears throat> on the side of this video, actually we should be right here to the left. The first thing I'd like to talk about is how Muhammad used to, as they put it, suck the tongues of others. It is written in Ihanat al Talibin the Abi Bakr al Dumyati, volume two, page two hundred and thirty one, that Muhammad used to suck the tongue of his wife Aisha. You know what? That's fine. Sucking the tongue of your wife, that's not a big deal. Let's, let's keep going. Uh, Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal, volume 4, page 93. And it talks about seeing the Prophet Muhammad sucking the tongue of Al Hassan bin Ali. Al Hassan bin Ali is obviously a man, it's a male. So here we have him also sucking the tongue or French kissing, or whatever you'd like to say it was, of another man. It is listed again in a different location, this one in Tariq Medina Dimashq Lil Hassan ibn Hibatullah, volume 14, page 169, where here it says, uh, <clears throat> Muhammad would suck the tongue of Al Hussein bin Ali, just like a boy would suck a date. Faid al Qadir lil Manawi, volume 5, page 249. Here it talks about Muhammad, where he would suck the tongues of those who were halal to him, his women, and those obviously whom his right hand possessed. But also, it talks about him sucking the tongue of his daughter, Fatima. Moving on to the next topic boobies. Breasts. Bihar al Anwar lil Bakari, volume 43, page 42, and Munaqib al Abi Talib li Ibn Shahr Ayyub, volume 3, page 114, and Al Lama al Bayda lil Tabrizi al Ansari, page 53, where it talks about the Prophet Muhammad used to not be able to go to sleep every day until he would place his face into his daughter Fatima's chest and rub and kiss between her breasts. 
The third thing I'd like to go to is Aisha, where he married her at the age of six and, you know, took her at the age of nine. And if we want to discuss, <clears throat> if we want to talk about that, this is uh, located, actually, this is in Hadith as well. Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, volume 5, page 1973, where it does talk about, you know, him marrying her at 6 and taking her at 9. <clears throat> However, I'd like to talk about him liking even younger girls. <clears throat> in... Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal, volume 6, page 338. Rasul, the Prophet Muhammad, had entered upon their house and saw the daughter of Abbas. And upon seeing her, and she was at the age of weaning. Okay? The Prophet Muhammad had said that if she were to become of age, when she becomes of age and if he were still alive, he wants to marry her. So here's a baby at the age of weaning and he's saying, he's looking at her and saying, once she's a little more mature, I want her. Uh, moving on to the next one is Mujamma uh, Zawaid Lil Haythami, volume 4, page 276. And again in Sinan Saeed bin Mansur, volume 2 page 123 and it talks about <clears throat> it talks about Muhammad having a concubine who had a daughter at the age of weaning he once picked up this girl who was naked and as he looked as he held her in his arms he realized there was a desire a lust within him uh, <clears throat> the last subject I'd like to go to is as if it hasn't been bad enough, is <clears throat> necrophilia. These six different people had referenced the same story. Now again, if, if it could have been a rumor, you know, passed on from one person to the other, but I'm just telling you what is written. Kenz al Ammal lil Muttaqi al Hindi, volume 13, page 274, and uh, the story of Al Hajjah, fi bayan al Muhad. Al Muhajjaba li Abi Al Qasim Al Asbahani, Volume 1, page 488. Here it talks about <clears throat> Al Rasul Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, having taken off his robe and placing it upon Umm Ali, the mother of Ali. And, and then he proceeded to lay with her in her grave. Now, as the soil started falling back to the grave, his followers noticed it, and surprisingly, they asked him and said, said, O oh, Prophet of God, you are doing something we have never seen you do before. To which he answered that he just clothed her, he clothed her with his robe so that she may have something heavenly to wear. And he attaja ma'ha. He slept with her, he lay with her, in order to uh, lessen the pains of the grave. Because whenever you're buried, there's pains that you experience, apparently. This was mentioned uh, six times. However, the whole topic of necrophilia, the whole topic of being able to sleep with a dead woman, what al mayyita is actually mentioned 16 different locations in 16 masadir, 16 references uh, such as Hawashi Sharwani, volume 1, page 263 The funny thing is, uh, I think we've all heard the story of how after a man performs the ablution, al wudu uh, there are three things that if he touches it will make him unholy, unclean, and he must clean himself again for a prayer which is a black dog, a donkey and a woman. However, in, in these references, it talks about wutu al mayita. If you lay with a dead woman, it does not make you unclean. Your salah would be accepted because you're clean. However, you become najas. You become dirty and vile if you touch a living woman. This is making me sick. I think I've had enough for tonight. 
Thank you for joining and I'll see you later.